YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers. And this is a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to. And we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be a part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, we got a lot. Like, a lot is probably an understatement. We got a lot of questions to get into in this episode. The special is probably going to go extra long, but we'll see. We got a lot of questions to get into. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Brandon M., who is a patron, and I appreciate you doing that. He said, Lamar is out two days in a row at practice. I seem to be a lot more concerned than a lot of other fans. How do you feel about Lamar missing practice with this illness? Now, now today is Friday, uh, November 19th. Okay, and Lamar returned to practice today, but still is a good question because when you miss time, when you, you, just, you have time away from the, your team, um, that's time away from you continuing to build that uh, that rapport, that camaraderie, you, you getting ready for the game. Uh, time away that you as QB1 uh, get to go over different game plans, adjustments and whatnot. So it definitely hurts. Um, but if you guys aren't making any adjustments, then what is it? But now nah, I'm playing. Um, with, it, it definitely hurts because uh, it just it's the reps. The football, one of the biggest things that football is about is about repetition. Um, but with him, I'm sure he's still been dialed in, still been virtually connected and whatnot. And I mean, live reps are nothing like live reps, though, because you could be behind the computer all day, but that don't mean that you know how to throw a football. Um, so with that being said, I, uh, I'm glad that he is back. So Friday, I believe Friday is usually more of a walkthrough practice. Uh, and then on, so is that Saturday? I think that might be Saturday. No, that's Friday, because Saturday they got to travel, uh, to Chicago and then they play. So... Uh, hopefully everything will be smooth sailing. I mean, he's missed practice before, and usually games when he misses when he misses practice from due to being sick. Ooh, it is it is a beautiful game. Uh, the next game, so hopefully things continue. Next question came from my guy Keith. He said, "Hey, Engraven, let's say we go twelve and five, win the division, win a playoff game, also, then we stall out in the playoffs as usual. When do you think Harbaugh will be on the hot seat? Would we'll love to hear your thoughts." Ooh, I um, I just feel like Harbaugh is just super super safe. I feel like he, he is super, super safe. I feel like the only way that he would ever be on, like, the hot seat would be if just even with the Lamar Jackson, like, with a healthy team, and they went, like, 0-17 or 1-16, um, I feel like even maybe 2-15 and 15, Ravens would still keep. I just, I feel like Harbaugh's, like, he he's, he got a, like a uh, Raven diplomatic community, like he can't be touched. I feel like he can, he cannot be touched, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I just I just feel like he's just safe. Period. Now the coordinators, I, I don't think that they're safe, but I feel like Harbaugh is safe. His leash is super long, uh, and I feel like he just ain't got nothing to worry about. Next question came from my guy Dave. He said, "Engraving, you have definitely become a big part of my daily Ravens fix. I appreciate what you're doing. Pray that your platform continues to grow far beyond even your own expectations." Uh, I have a two-part question. I, I appreciate it. Wherever this thing goes, who who knows? But th thank you. Number one, he said, we all know that Ravens draft needs will likely lean heavy toward the offensive line and younger upgrades to the defensive line will be paramount as well. But imagine yourself as Eric DaCosta, knowing the injuries that our three running backs have suffered, plus injuries to Latavius Murray, and keeping in mind the importance of depth at this all-important position for such a run-centric offense. And keeping in mind your desire as the Costa to build an undefendable offense, would you agree that having a stud running back is super important to the success of Lamar? Uh, if a talent, no, I, I don't think so. Now, having a stud running back would definitely help Lamar a lot, a, a whole lot, and it would him it would make his job that much easier. But I I don't not that it's not important. It would just make his job easier. So yeah, you obviously want the quarterback job to be easier. Uh, but I don't feel like it's a requirement for Lamar to do well. I feel like, first and foremost, it's offensive line. It is the offensive line. Because when he has time, oh, boy, it's, it's, it's nasty in a good way. But when he doesn't, it's nasty in a nasty way. Anyway, um, he said, uh, if a talented uh, running back with size, strength, and speed is available when the Ravens make their first selection in 2022, would you, as the Costa, pass up such a talent? Yes. Uh, does hoping that J.K. and Gus will be 100% at the start of 2022 seem like poor planning? Um, no, not no, because they got injured before the season even started. So they will have had this entire season and then the entire offseason to get right. Um, and then, like, what you could do, too, is 
sign a couple of guys, keep a couple of guys um, for just as just in case guys. Because uh, Justice Hill, I think they they did was they did an injury wave to him. Like and I don't I don't know exactly how that works. To me, it sounds like uh, it is like an injured in, yeah injury wave designation. So to me, what it sounds like is that he he go on injury reserve. Well, they waived him, but if nobody claims him, then he'll just revert back to injury reserve. But I don't know if that's exactly what it entails. But I, I wouldn't envision him being back next year. Uh, Justice Hill, that is, and uh, so you just gotta have a backup plan. Have a backup plan, but I, I would not say invest, invest high draft capital uh, into a running back. No, not not, not at all. And he said he said Lamar needs a fully healthy stud running back next to him. Uh, the length of his career may depend on it. Now, with that part, I, I see what you're saying, but um, so yeah, having a really good running back helps because again, that alleviates pressure off of you as the quarterback. So, and he also said in reference to my question, uh, my point was that it is my humble opinion that despite the need for at least three offensive linemen, two defensive linemen, one safety, one corner, one inside linebacker. Going into the 2022 draft, where we have just 10 picks for now, because you know Ravens, they, they're going to end up finding a way to get like 22 picks. Anyway, uh, that we should strengthen our strength. Uh, in the same way that the Cardinals continue to give Kyler, Murray, Kyler Murray more wide receiver weapons, in addition to adding A.J. Green and DeAndre Hopkins, they also drafted an up-and-coming stud in Rondell Moore. With the injuries suffered at the running back position and knowing how important the strength of that position is to the success of Lamar in the offense, would you welcome South Carolina running back Kevin Harris as the first-round selection in 2022? I believe that he is exactly the type of running back that we have needed for years, like worth moving up to get. Mm. Nobody catches him from behind. He's a great pass catcher. He runs through brick walls, and his balance is insane. He's 5'11", 225. He'll make Lamar so much better. Then, J.K. won't have to rush back like Stanley did. Uh, even if Dobbins were 100% by the start of OTAs, I still believe that Harris would st would steal uh, uh, his running back one spot. Ooh. Around the same time last year, I was under the delusion that I was the only one who knew about it, about Jalen Waddle. Thought the Costa could sneak and draft him. Uh, thought he was perfect for Lamar. Didn't realize how popular he would be going into the draft. This could hold true for Harris. He would be what we have been missing since the departure of Jamal Lewis. No, I, mm, I, I, I wouldn't do that. Um, of course, you, you want to go with best available or whatnot, but still, I, I wouldn't jump up for a running back. And I see what you're saying, but this Ravens, I know they, they say, oh, yeah, best player available. Don't draft for need. No, 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 no. Nope. Mm -mm. This draft, you you go by what you need and you select the best player available from what you need, in my opinion, because your needs are huge. They they are huge. And of course, you got free agency and whatnot. You got trades or what. Your needs are huge. So you need to address them as such. But his second question, uh, he said, everybody's talking about the blitz zero defense that teams are using to shut down the Ravens offense. I was especially um, intrigued by the breakdown that Kurt Warner has given on why our offense has been sputtering. Uh, if you or the viewers haven't seen it, I believe you'll find it enlightening. When the back goes in motion, he starts too late or too early, and the timing of Lamar's passes are way off. Well, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I, I, I saw like, um, I saw like a little bit of it, but then I just I end up start doing something else. The attention span is like negative three. Anyway, um, he said. Uh, he has, to, he has to get the ball out quicker. Defenders will have Lamar's number for every remaining game if change doesn't come. Although accuracy is also a factor, could Lamar's delayed passing time be affected by a thought always in the forefront of his mind that he wants to run the ball instead of getting the rock to the hands of his receivers? Harbaugh stated in his press conference that they have multiple remedies for the zero blitz, yet they haven't used these remedies. Why? Could Harvest be spinning to the press? We'll see. We'll see in future games. That's the only thing we can do now is, is see how they operate in the future. Now, with Lamar, I, I, I disagree about the, um, the part about could, his, uh, could, the delayed, could Lamar's delayed passing time be affected by a thought always in the forefront of his mind that he wants to run the ball instead of getting the rocket into his hands of the receivers? No, that couldn't be further from the truth. Reason being because we have seen that a lot last year. We've seen it a lot this year, too, where Lamar will have a lane, but and we'll be like, go, oh, Lamar, run, run, run. And he won't take it. He'll just sit there, sit there, sit there, and wait, 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 wait. And then he, and he'll be looking for that big play. He'll be looking for that chunk play, and he does it a lot. So he just, he's looking downfield, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing if you don't take what's in front of you, too, if downfield ain't there. So Lamar got to do a better job of seeing what's right in front of him instead of only looking for the, the, that deep shot all the time. Because the deep plays are nice, and we all get hyped and excited from the deep plays, but you got to take the little the small chunks as well. So it's all about the uh, balancing act. Next question. <laughs> 
came from my guy Kiani. He said, those Ravens and the screenplays. What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the family are safe and well. Been, been watching for a while. This will be my first question submitted. All right, appreciate it, Kiani. Well, welcome. I'm writing this email during the halftime break. Oh, oh, he wrote this during the halftime of the Dolphins game. Ooh. Anyway, um, I'm writing this email during the halftime break of the match versus the Dolphins. I just had to get it off my chest. So last week against the Vikings, we ran a few successful screenplays, which we haven't seen basically since Ray Rice. Uh, why does Greg Roman now think we're a screenplay team? There's been a screenplay every single drive when the Dolphins are reading it and stopping it. I just feel like we have we have we haven't been good with running and defending screens in a long while. We'd we'll love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Sorry for the long question and enjoy your day. P.S. If you're wondering how the name is pronounced, it's Kiani. Oh no, yeah, Kioni. That looks like Kioni. The way that you wrote it. Okay, if it's Kioni, my apologies. I thought it was Kiani. Anyway, um, correct me when you whenever you hear this. Uh, yeah, the, the, the screenplays, it was just, they, they were just off balance. It was off balance. It was like, oh man, it's like they got a taste of the screenplay. And that's on Lamar too. Cause apparently Lamar, he had checked into some of those screenplays. So that's on him too. Um, being like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm allowed to run this. I, I can run a screenplay, g Row. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm doing it to the max. Let's go. Screenplay, 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 screenplay. And it was just like, oh, okay. We, we, we get it. Um, but it's all about, again, like we mentioned previously, it's, it's about that balance. Um, and, and using it effectively at the right time. And Ravens still have to figure out how to do that. Um, now, if your offensive line has just been struggling, uh, I, I'm still waiting on them screenplays to the running backs. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know why the Ravens don't do it. Not with J.K., not with Gus Edwards, not with Justice Hill, not with Mark Ingram, not with Le'Veon Bell, not with Devontae Freeman, not with Latavius Murray, not with Tyson Williams. The reason I listed all the running backs from the past couple of years is because just to show you that it's not just a thing. Because Oh, man, cause the, the, it's because the Ravens don't have their normal running backs right now. No, they still didn't run it when they had their normal running backs. So I, I, I don't know what the issue is. Next question came from my boy Josh. He said, I ain't Raven. Hope all is well with you and the family. Second year true Ravens fan and appreciate you and Team Keep It Clean for giving me all I need to know about the Ravens. Uh, this message is coming after the loss at home to the Dolphins. LOL. I, I like how you did that. Uh, I know we get some highlights here and there, but this game was truly a reminder that Hollywood's hands lack a lot. And we don't really have a threat uh, anywhere else besides QB. Do you think it's time we actually invest into getting uh, those notable certified guys on our team? Uh, whether it's a wide receiver, defensive lineman, or anything. Feels like we just have a lot of okay guys playing. Um, no, Hollywood, yeah, sometimes he does have some drops. And that Miami game was just his second worst game of the season. Second worst, but he has made a lot more plays than he's left on the field uh, throughout the course of this season. But yeah, that that game against Miami was it was a really bad game for him. Um, but he's a playmaker. He's a, he's a big time playmaker. Rashad Bateman, he has shown that hey, he's a chain mover. And the more they get him involved, it, the better this offense will be. And Sammy Watkins, he's made his handful of plays this year too, and he's helped Hollywood be better. And when they all three get on the field together and they're all healthy. Because Sammy Watkins, I, I hope he wasn't healthy against the Dolphins. Because if he was healthy and that was his showing, ooh, big yikes. Um, but when he gets healthy and all three of them can be on the field at the same time, healthy, uh, along with Mark Andrew, it it will just open up so much stuff. So um, I still wouldn't be opposed to them going out and getting somebody else, like card, card, doing the Cardinals to this thing. Like like the guy, like uh, I think it was Dave mentioned earlier, had a Cardinals. They, Kyler Murray had DeAndre Hopkins. They added A.J. Green. They added Rondell Moore. Yeah, Kirk. So he had guys, but they still kept adding. And, like, a quarterback, he can never have enough weapons. Um, but it's also about with the guys that you got, putting them in the best position uh, for them to succeed and really using them to their strengths. So, yeah, Ravens got some guys for sure. Um, and I wouldn't just say, oh, it's just okay guys. They got, they got some guys that can play, some guys that can ball, some guys that can make some plays. Um, and I was just about putting him in the best position to do it. Next question came from my boy Dominic. He said, hey, man, hope everything is well with you. The offense, for the most part, has been good all year, especially play calling. But the Dolphins game was a different story. Screen after screen after screen, I just don't get it. My question is, do you think the play calling was so bad this game? Or the Miami defense was just that good? I would say a mix of both, for sure. A mix of both. Um, and he said, there were no ad adjust excuse me, adjustments on offense. In every play, a man was free running at Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Definitely a mix of both for sure, because it the Dolphins their their defense was outstanding and they were like, hey, y'all gonna keep giving us this? We're gonna keep running. I, I loved it because 
they didn't try to fix what wasn't broken. Their defense certainly wasn't broken in that Dolphins game. <laughs> like, they, ooh, oh, it was so bad. Um, well, for the Ravens, that is. Uh, but in Ravens, they were like, oh, it's broken. We're not going to fix it. So now it's just about all the adjustments moving forward. Uh, and, yeah, like you mentioned, the offense, it hasn't been bad overall this year. They, but their the issues are big issues. Um, and their issues like what? I think what Ravens fans' biggest frustration is that with the Ravens' offensive issues, just speaking about offense, we ain't talking about defense, their biggest issues on offense are, are issues that um, we, we're scared of for when it's playoff time. And if we see that these issues aren't getting fixed now, then come playoff time, you ain't going to be in there very long if these issues don't get fixed now next question came from my boy joshua hey he said number eight was the only one who looked passionate and angry on the sidelines during the miami game the rest were just blankly gazing around do you think lamar needs to be harder on his teammates so they can be passionate and step up not just waiting for him to do miracles and do you think he needs to be more vocal calling out his teammates and stop being all buddy buddy now we see it seems as if lamar jackson does that already um because when when things are going bad oh you could see it on his face you can see it on his face. You can see it on his eye. Like if 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 he misses on a pass, um, then he'll he'll go like like y'all always see. It. He'll go like that. But if somebody else misses, like if if they getting ready to get a playoff and it's a, a false start, or if it's a um if if it, yeah for false start, he'll go to the offensive lineman and he'll yell at him real quick. But then he'll he'll tap him on the helmet. Um, but then he'll and he'll he'll like he'll do that. Like he won't go off on somebody like a, a receiver or something like that. He'll talk to them. And he'll, you'll see the frustration when, they, when if the receiver like drops it or something, that was a big play. He's like, oh, he won't go off on him. But um, and I think that 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 actually is a pretty good, not even strategy, just the way that it is, because uh, he he shows like one thing that I see from his game a lot is that if a receiver, say for instance, a receiver drops a pass, he it ain't like he's gonna be like, all right, I ain't going to that receiver no more. I'm only looking for everybody else. No, he'll go right back to that receiver and give them another opportunity to make a catch. He's done it with Hollywood plenty of times this season. He's done it with Mark Andrews plenty of times this season. He, he, he's done it and, and shown like, all right, no, I'm going to still go to my guys regardless. Um, so I, I don't think anything is wrong with the, uh, the way that he shows passion and, and leadership in his game. Stomped. Next question came from my boy, Droid209. He said, Engraver, man, I hope you had a good time at the game, minus firsthand watching our boys get punched in the mouth. Couple of questions. Did the snap look off to you? That's something that I've been forgetting to talk about a lot when we talked about this Dolphins game. The snaps, the snaps, a lot of them, they, they were all over the place. A lot of them were. And when the, when the ball is snapped high, if it's snapped low, then that can mess up your quarterback because they, they worried about catching the ball. They, they worried about catching the ball. So then after they catch the ball, that gives the defense that like that half a second. That gives them that much more time to get up after the quarterback. So, yeah, they were. And he said it seems very slow and delayed at times. Well, every snap it was very slow. And who was to blame for a humble pie loss? Uh, the refs for incorrect, incomplete pass to Andrews. Sammy Watkins fumble. Greg Roman not adjusting to the offense. Offensive line or defensive line? Long question. I'm sorry in advance. I just want some answers from whatever it is. I watch Thursday night. Take care. Uh, side note. He said if y'all have Ravens defense in your fantasy league, take them out. Ooh. All right. So um, with this, uh, who was to blame? Everything. Everything. And I, I can't even blame it on the refs because the, the refs were really – um, yeah, the, with that Mark Andrews catch, I, I still haven't seen. I haven't seen the TV version of it because when we were there, the catch, Mark Andrews, he had his back turned towards us, so we couldn't see the ball at all. And um, they did not show it on the replay, which was so weird. Um, they didn't show it on the big screens. they like, oh, the Dolphins are challenging the, the catch, the ruling of the ref is a catch. And then they showed the ref going to the booth, but they did not show the replay at all. In every single game that I've ever been to, they always show the replay. But anyway, um, I guess dolphins were doing some fishy business. Get a little dad joke. Anyway, um, it wasn't the refs because the refs were the only reason why, that the Ravens even had gotten a touchdown in the first place because they helped them uh, multiple times on that only touchdown drive of the game. Um, the Sammy Watkins fumble, that was huge. And, and that was when it was still a one score game. I'm like 99% sure it was a one score game. And that play, that was a play that actually worked. It actually worked. And I, I, 
I want to say it was on third down. I forget what down it was, but I'm pretty sure he got crossed the first down marker, and they, it was positive yards. And it was like, okay, let's go. Then fumble, and not only fumble, but fumble and fumble return for a touchdown. So they give up the ball and they give up points on offense. Double whammy. Offense scoring the wrong kind of points, my friends. That was terrible. Um, Greg Roman not adjusting. Yeah, well, we know about that. Uh, and defense, yeah, just the and the defense again. They uh, they gave up some big plays, but they didn't give up touchdowns. They gave up some big plays, which you, you would hope they don't give up because that can trend. That like if you're not giving up those big plays, then you're not giving up points. So this defense, like they've been giving up a lot of big plays this season. So that's something. That, so it was just a mix of everything to answer your question. Next question came from Al B. He said, Aloha, team, keep it clean. Hope all is well with you and yours. Keep up the good work on YouTube. I'm a Baltimorean who transplanted to Hawaii 25 years ago, but I've been a Baltimore football fan since the club was the Colts and the stars were Johnny Unitas, Lenny Moore, Big Daddy Lipscomb, uh, and Gino Machete. Mad Dog, Mike Curtis, John Mackey, and I could go on. This is my first time asking a question. My question is this. Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback, but the entire NFL does have him figured out, as well as any football fan who has watched him closely. The way to beat him is to get him in a circumstance where he feels he has to make something happen. Uh, when he's in that space, he tries too hard. At least interceptions, fumbles, and sacks. Even the best need to be coached. But is James Urban the right QB coach for Lamar? I know he coached uh, Michael Vick, but Lamar needs a QB coach who can take him to the next level. Who can teach him how not to feel that he has to make things happen all by himself. He needs to learn when not to do so much, which leads to mistakes. Nothing against James Urban. Uh, he did good with Vic, and he's done good with Lamar, but can he take him to the next level? Or should the Ravens hire someone who's been there and done that? Is it time for the Ravens to hire Michael Vick himself as Lamar's QB coach? Ooh, no, 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 no. Uh, so that Lamar can be all that he can be. Thanks for listening. I look forward to your response, and go Ravens. Hey, appreciate that. Mahalo. Ow. So, that's a really good question. Um, but I feel like, I feel like you could say that about any quarterback. Especially a dual threat quarterback. Like, I feel like you could say that exact same thing uh, that you just said. Like, he said the way to beat him is to get him in a circumstance where he feels he has to make something happen. When he's in that space, he tries too hard, at least to interceptions, fumbles, and sacks. You look at Patrick Mahomes. Um, if you keep on getting to him, like, look at the Super Bowl game. Look at the, even the Ravens game this year. Where you, you, you're getting to him and you're, you're taking away his options and you're getting him into a position where he feels he has to make something happen. Like he has to. Pressure's getting there like a Dafe away. The pressure that got there, he didn't get the sack. But Patrick Mahomes, he tried to do one of his little crazy plays, he ended up throwing a pick to Tavon Young. So I, I feel like that's not just a Lamar thing. That's just a, a quarterback thing. If a quarter, and more so a dual threat. Because, like, if it's, a, if it's a quarterback and he's not a dual threat and he feels like he has to make something happen, well, it's just pressure. Straight up. That, the, the, the word for that is just is pressure. You're putting pressure on that quarterback. That's why teams, and especially Wink, he talks about pressure so much because it can bust pipes. And so Lamar is no different. When that pressure is consistently getting to him, oh, yeah, he, he, he presses. He starts pressing like crazy. And this is nothing new. This is not uh, anything that we haven't seen uh, so far, but we, we've seen it. So it is, I think it's, it all starts to me, uh, with that, with the offensive line. It starts with the offensive line. Um, and the offensive line just has not been given the time to quarterbacks. It hasn't been given time to the running backs. Um, it just, it, it hasn't been provided. So when the offensive line doesn't provide, uh, the quarterback is, is, is rough. So I just, yeah, I, I feel like it's that, that, that's all it is. It's that, that pressure. When pressure is con consistently getting to him, then it, it's not good for any quarterback at all. All right, next question came from my guy, OMG. He said, hey, engraving me and probably the rest of us Ravens fans were disappointed in last night's loss against the Dolphins. Seemed like our offense went back to last year when our wide receivers couldn't get open and the passing scheme was just non-existent. Lamar is continuing to get sacked and hit due to the poor offensive line and he's having to do everything himself this season. He's our franchise quarterback. Lamar was upset and frustrated during his post-game press conference that he doesn't understand why the offense is so slow. But uh, if he's upset, then there's definitely something wrong and changes need to be made now. Uh, do you think that Lamar should try and have his own input with EDC and who he wants uh, for his offensive coordinator and the pieces he needs around him in order to be successful with the Ravens going forward? Sorry for the long rant. Keep up the good work. And just like how I want Greg Roman to be by this week. 
I'm out. This guy. Well, he does have input with the pieces. He was the one that asked for Hollywood. He also asked for um for Jerry Judy as well. So I'm sure he's asked for more. Um, so that so he's already been doing that. But as far as an offensive coordinator, that would be a tricky one. Because I would love for Lamar to be able to get his own guy that he wanted as an offensive coordinator. Um, then at the same time, I would wouldn't want it to be somebody who Lamar would be too comfortable with. Now comfortable, yes, but too comfortable. And and what I mean when I say that is I wouldn't want it to be somebody that doesn't challenge Lamar. It would have to be somebody that, yeah, you'd be cool with him and, and somebody that could probably relate to him on a whole nother level too. I think that would be great. And that's exactly what I had been clamoring for uh, last year. Ravens bringing in coaches that could more relate to the players on a whole nother level uh, and just some young, innovative offensive minds. And they brought in T. Martin and Keith Williams. Um, but as far as the offensive coordinator, I would like the same thing, but just somebody that would definitely challenge Lamar. And he could challenge them too. Like they could both bring the best out of each other. And yeah, there would be some awkward conversations. There'd be some heated conversations, some intense moments and whatnot. But you need that. You need that to really get the best out of something. You got to be willing to go there. It has to get uncomfortable sometimes in order for y'all to really break through. So I would love if that happened. Next question came from my guy Trenton. He said, hey man, I hope you're doing well and your family stay blessed forever. I appreciate that. My question is, do you think there's any way Lamar doesn't sign a contract with the Ravens? I know he's our number one and will always be a Raven, but is there any possibility of them or him not signing a mega deal? As always, stay awesome. Hope to see my question on the episode. Ooh, that is a powerful question right there. Ravens, they... <laughs> Oh, my good. Just thinking about it, like, it kind of gives me, like, a bad, bad goosebumps. And it, that would be all kinds of bad. Ravens, they better not, and but they, they, they could not let something like that happen. Because they would, oh, boy, just imagine that scenario. Like, think about that. If Ravens didn't end up signing Lamar, he wouldn't sign else. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Fan base, they would go crazy. Uh, players in different leagues would go crazy. Players in the NFL, they would go crazy. Like, that would be crazy. Ravens, they could not and they will not let that happen. Anything's a possibility until it isn't anymore. So right now, technically, it is still a possibility, but, ooh, yeah, they, they can't let that go down. Because that, like... That would just be, and I, I mean, I hate using this term, but that would be a very stupid move. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, after this season, it's time for some major changes with some new faces and creative mindsets. It's time for Wink and Roman to, to leave the bank. Oh, my goodness. We blitz way too much, which causes blown coverages, and Roman play calling has not evolved. We need to get younger and athletic on the entire defense and on the offensive line as well. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, uh, with Wink... I don't know with Wink. With Wink, I, I just feel like like this year there's been this stubbornness almost and this this lack of adjustment. And you got to realize that you ain't got all the same guys out there. You ain't got all the same. You're missing Marcus Peters. You're missing Deshaun Elliott. Um, you, you just you're missing some significant guys. But you you have to you have to adjust. You got to put guys in better position in order to succeed. Guys have been left out on an island so many times this year. There's been so many blown coverages this year. It's just been a lot, and I just, huh. But I, I don't know. It's it's the weirdest thing. I just feel like Wink is a uh, like kind of safe, almost. I mean, I feel like his seat is a little bit hot, but I, I feel like he's a lot safer than Greg Roman is, especially because so much of the uh, what gets talked about is the offense with the Ravens. Because obviously you got Lamar Jackson, um, so he's gonna go on a lot of attention. But I just, with Wink, so I, I mean, with Greg Roman, I, I could see some changes there, just depending on so much. Uh, and Wink, I think it's a, it's a possibility, um, especially because of how the defense has been. But he could get that injury pass, though. It was like, oh, no, all these guys were injured. So that's why that, that's why that happened like that. And, and again, players love Wink. But that was interesting because today, uh, November 19th, uh, my guy Jamil had tweeted. Um, he tweeted something about the scheme about Matt Judon and saying, "Oh, it's, it wasn't. It actually wasn't Matt Judon." Okay, here it is. He said, and this is Jamil Seven underscore on Twitter. He said, "I want to apologize to Matt Judon for believing or for not believing you were this great of a player." Uh, and this is in regards to him 
getting 10 and a half sacks through 11 games, his career high. Uh, and then he followed it up. He said, I was completely wrong. You're prove, you've proved, excuse me, you're proving more and more that Ravens fans aren't crazy when they say it's the system, not the players. And somebody who liked that was Mr. Deshaun Elliott. This question came from my guy Darnell. He said, hey, good afternoon, engraving crew of the good work. Just stopping by to put something on everyone's mind. Do you think by any chance the Ravens should use four and five wide receiver sets through all four quarters of the game? Because when they do it, it works. Think about every game the Ravens came back from this season. They were in those four and five wide receiver sets. Um, I see when when they when they spread out the defense like that. Now, if it's four or five wide receivers, not that you use it all game long, but you could use it a lot. But when 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 you had come out in those four or five sets, but it's not all wide receivers. You got a full back out wide, and you like, oh, what? Like, oh, it would be so cringy, man. Then you got Le'Veon Bell out wide, and even though he is more of a receiver than well, he's a receiver and a running back. He could do both, but. Just the personnel that the personnel that would have to be on point. That's the biggest thing. When they come out oh five wide, it's all about personnel. But you could um, you could have one running back, uh, three receivers, and a tight end, and that would allow you if you do go four or five wide, cool. But that would allow you to have certified weapons on the field, and then if you change the play like you could go no huddle go more up tempo and you would have good personnel on the field that you could go up tempo with so that's that's the biggest thing with that the, the four or five wide sets cool but it's all about personnel this question came from my guy jaquan he said what's up engraving hope all is well with you and the fam first off glad you still enjoyed yourself at the game even with so many disappointments uh but anyway i think lamar and hollywood's relationship off the field is hurting us don't get me wrong i love lamar to death but it seems like he's forcing the ball to hollywood Way too much. Like every play is going to him. And a little Andrew sprinkled in. I think we need to get Bateman going. He's our number one in my opinion. What do you think? Now, I do agree. They, they do need to get Bateman going more. They need to get him involved more because ba Bateman is nice, man. He's nice. He, 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 he got something serious. You got to keep Hollywood involved, too. Um, but with Lamar, yeah, sometimes he does just he sometimes he does force it to Hollywood. Uh, we've seen it sometimes when Hollywood will have like literally two or three people on him. And Lamar will be like, oh, there you go. Don't to you. Um, and you got to make better decisions with the ball. So Lamar got to do a better job of just seeing the field, a uh, better job of getting some different guys involved and just looking at potential matchups, or not potential, looking at matchups, um, and just really trying to exploit defenses and not just going to Hollywood. Now, we know he trusts Hollywood. He loves Hollywood. That's his guy. Um, but you, you guys to just open up the field that much more because – if you so focus on Hollywood and defenses can focus on Hollywood, and if you still focus on Hollywood after defenses focus focus on Hollywood, then that's gonna make it so much easier for them. So Ravens need to do a better job of making the, the defenses job the defenses job they go against a lot harder. And his other question was, uh, "What's up, Engraven? Uh, this is a little off topic, but I have something hilarious on my mind. And have you noticed that when the Browns win, we hear nothing about Baker's injuries, but when they lose, he's so beat up and blames everyone else after that Cincinnati game. We heard nothing about him hurting." Just a thought. And P.S. Baker's house about to get broken into when we come to town. Well, that was certainly uh, should be a very, very good and, and tough game uh, as well. And he also mentioned one more thing. I think the Ravens are holding Lamar back. And I think for the first time we saw the effects of it with Lamar on the sideline upset. They put too much on that guy. I think our biggest weakness is offensive line. What do you think? Oh, that's for sure Ravens' biggest weakness to me. Well, that that's that's the weakness that... um. They uh, that it, it it would strengthen them like immediately if they could get that right. It would strengthen them so much, make them so much better right away. If they could get that offensive line right, it, it would make them just oh, do that thing instantly. Next question came from my boy Kevin S. He said Lamar has outgrown this offense. They need to run a mix between Shanahan offense, Rams, and Peyton Manning Colts stretch play action. That way, you get Lamar on the move to the right and left misdirection stretch play action so it sounds like my guy kevin s needs to put in an application to be the new ravens offensive coordinator next question came from my guy that hitman john he said hey engraven hope you're having a good day and the family as well i appreciate it i have two questions judon has been having a career year with the patriots do you think that that's an indication on how the patriots actually tried to let their d-line get pressure with four without doing all these crazy stunts and blitzes because i remember when i was watching an interview from unique and he said something like doing all those stunts and blitzes don't really let you go into it uh, with a plan and just use pass rush moves. So do you think our defensive scheme is also affecting our pass rushes in a negative way? And most importantly, always growth. Sorry for the long question. 
Yeah, with the um, it's 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 just a Raven scheme. It's their philosophy. It's the way that they do things. They um, it's it's all about the more you can do, and that's like that's not a bad thing, but they can often be less results when you're having to do so much and when you're uh, like, okay, you, you're going to drop back. Okay, um, this safety. All right, like Chuck Clark, for example. All right, Chuck Clark, he's a safety, so he drops back. Okay, Chuck Clark's in the box too. Okay, Chuck Clark, he's outside linebacker because he's a pass rusher too. Um, okay, Chuck, like they have him doing so much, and Chuck's he's obviously a small player and whatnot, and um, he's the one calling the plays. But then when you think of him, how good is Chuck Clark of a safety? And then Deshaun Elliott, the same thing. Uh, you like, is he truly a free safety? He's listed as a free safety, but he's like really a strong safety playing free safety. Um, but they they don't. It, it the Ravens defense it doesn't allow guys to really specialize in any one thing, in my opinion, because they all always doing so many different things. Um, and he said, P.S., hope you see this because I'd be curious to see what Team Keep It Clean community thinks about this. Well, I think a lot of them will be on the same page with you. Now, the scheme overall over the years, the thing about it, it has worked as far as not production with sacks, but with points. They are one of the top defenses, but minus this year, in points allowed before this year, over the past couple of years of Wink. But with this year... I think that the Ravens may be riding on the past two years and be like, oh, no, it's worked before, so why should we change it? That's where adjustments come into play. Next question came from your boy Wayne. He said, what up, Engraven? How's everything? Hope you all good. My question for you is, if Giro does get let go, who would you pick as an offensive coordinator? Uh, me, personally, we need a Mike Shanahan type of offense. We see that it's working for the Rams, 49ers, and Packers, and if you put Lamar in that style of offense, we will have success. But what do you think? Mm, that's interesting. Somebody just brought up um, Mike Shanahan and his offense. Or Kyle Shanahan, actually, I mean. Um, who would I get as an offensive coordinator if, if they let G. Rowe go? Maybe, maybe either Keith Williams or T. Martin. This could be those guys' time to, to shine. And their chance to, to step forward and, and take on that responsibility because they don't have the experience as offensive coordinators in the NFL. So nobody really knows what they will bring to the table. They're young guys. They can relate to Lamar on a whole nother level. So I think they would be great fits. Next question came from my boy Jay. He said, hey, Engraven, hope all is well with you and the fam. I want to say thank you for being a consistent presence in what has been a very... <laughs> A very inconsistent uh, Raven season. My question is, with all the talk of letting g -Row go, who could you see up as a, as a potential replacement? A lot of fans have been asking for Williams and Martin, but Williams has no known experience in the role, and Martin's only experience was for a bad USC team. See, this is why. When I said those two, that's why. Either one of those two. So based off of what you said, it would be Keith Williams. This is why. Because this would give him an opportunity, because it would be something that was never on film before, that had never been seen before. And he would have a chance to really, be, and after having worked directly with Lamar, directly with the receivers, directly with the running backs, tight end, directly with the offense, he would have his chance to make his own offense. And after seeing what has worked and what hasn't worked, he doesn't have a resume in the NFL as far as, as an offensive coach. This could be his opportunity. But anyway, let me finish. He said, one name I keep hoping for is James Urban, the QB coach for the Ravens who is from the Andy Reid coaching tree who already has a relationship with Lamar. When I think of an offensive coordinator that can design an offense that plays best into Lamar's strengths, it seems like a no-brainer. Please let me know your thoughts, and who knows? Maybe g Row writes the ship and is back next year. We'll never know. We'll see soon. But, yeah, James Urban is another name um, that would uh, make sense since he's been with the Ravens forever, but you just hope that – if it was James Urban, if it did end up becoming him, you just hope that he doesn't, uh, that he he takes what Giro does successfully and keeps that and it makes his own version of it too. But with what Giro does bad, you hope that he doesn't bring those same habits. Next question came from my boy Jeremy. He said, hey, Engraven, this is my first question ever, so I hope you choose to answer this on your podcast. Been listening to you since last season after my brother told me about you. Oh, shout out to your brother. Appreciate y'all. He said, what is your take on Raven snapping the ball almost 100% of the time as the play clock is expiring? Oh, boy. That is so frustrating um, because it just looks like sloppiness. 
It's like it looks like sloppiness, and it it forces you to rush things. It forces you to rush plays, and when you gotta rush stuff, usually the quality of it isn't as good. Um, and he said, "I feel like we aren't helping the offensive line at all by doing that, and defensive linemen are getting a jump on on us almost every down. I'm not sure if it is because the plays are not being called in quick enough, or is that just our plan on offense? Who is to blame there?" I, that that I hope that's not the plan, but that's that's between uh, Lamar and Giro. They gotta get they gotta get the plays in like ASAP, ASAP, uh, and then Lamar gotta get everybody set up, get it, get it called, and get it executed ASAP. Um, so that's on both of them. It's, it is very frustrating to to see that, and it's like man, like why? And it ha- it's been happening for so long, and it happens so much. I, I, that's one thing I just I, I don't understand. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Makai. Uh, he had previously on November fifteenth. I mean, no, excuse me, on November 4th, he sent me a question that said, I wanted to get your opinion on Tyson Williams. I think they might be saving him for the end of the season due to the 17-game season and or the playoffs. Uh, but then he sent me another question, a follow-up to that. He said, what's up, Engraven? I wanted to ask if I was right in the Ravens saving Tyson for the end of the season after Le'Veon Bell was released. Um, I, I, I still don't think they're necessarily saving him. I, I think he's, I just feel like he's just there. He's just there. Um, and may, he's like a... Like I said, a reserve, reserve, because they they just they don't care for Tyson right now. He's like he, he's like an afterthought there. Um, and I would hope that with Le'Veon Bell gone now, Latavius Murray coming back, so you know it's gonna be Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, and I wouldn't even be surprised if it was Nate McCrary. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was Nate McCrary over Tyson uh, Williams. But we'll just see. So I can't say you're right. I can't say you're wrong. We just don't know yet. Next question also came from uh, Makai. He said, the engraving curse has struck. In the last two games you went to, Titans and Dolphins, Ravens have two of their worst coach games of all time. All love. Keep up the great work. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it is me. I'm the reason that uh, the coaches have had terrible games. I, I get in the building and they decide, you know what? Let's have some of our worst coach games uh, of the season. So, yes, th- those are the reasons why the Ravens have lost both of those games because of me. You are 1,000% correct. Next question came from my guy Greg from B-More. He said, hey, hope all is well. During the Thursday game on TV, they talked about how the Florida connections to the Ravens, and all I could think of was you saying the Florida Ravens. Uh, Villanueva needs to play better, but I don't think he's playing as horrible as some might think. That's true. Uh, well, it's like when, when it's bad with Villanueva, it's bad. It's like really bad. And you see him get beat. You'll see him get pushed back into Lamar. It, 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 like when it's bad, it's bad. But it's been... Anyway, he said uh, Orlando Brown Jr. was better last year, but he had Bozeman next to him at left guard to help some. I don't think Ben Powers or Cleveland uh, before the injury were playing the best at left guard. It is the weak point currently on the offensive line, I think. Cleveland is a rookie, and I'm excited for his potential. But Powers, uh, though I always hope for the best for him since he was drafted from the late great um, MO, um, Powers just doesn't look like a starter to my eyes. Uh, I had a thought, though, that maybe it's a left side thing with both Powers and Cleveland. And even for when McCarty returns to right tackle, Tyree Phillips, who played right guard last season, could play all could play better uh, at right guard than left guard. Maybe move the right guard, Kevin Zyler, to left guard to help out Villanueva some. Anyways, what's your thoughts on this? Uh, Zyler, you haven't heard his name too much this season. And that's a good thing. As an offensive lineman, that's, that's a great thing. Um, so I feel like for, for a spot where it hasn't been bad at right guard, I feel like with how bad the offensive line as a whole has been, I feel like you can't change that. I feel like you 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 can't even uh, yeah it could possibly make the left guard spot better but it's in the middle of the season he'll be going from right to left that's a big change so I, I would say no. Next question came from DeAndre saying Graven I have a couple of questions that I'd like to hear your thoughts on. Number one, why doesn't Lamar dump it off to the backs coming out of the backfield how Flacco did? It seems like the running backs are open with about ten yards before the closest defender but he doesn't even look their way majority of the time. He then takes off and runs or takes a sack. I believe Tyson and Bell. Oh well, let me let me wait for that one. Um, so for that, uh, yeah, he looks for the big play a lot of times. Looks for that big chunk play. So like we talked about earlier, he got to do a better job of like looking what's in front of him. I believe Tyson Williams and Le'Veon Bell, well, this is obviously before he was cut, but can be dangerous if we got them more involved in the passing game. Agreed. Um, Devontae Freeman, too. And now Latavius Murray. Uh, my second question is, do you think our defensive players lack play recognition? Not Justin Houston and, and not Calais Campbell, but maybe some other ones, maybe. 
Uh, when I watch our team, I never feel like the defense knows what's coming. When Ray Lewis played, it seemed as if he always knew what was coming before they ran the play. I think we rely more on Wink than we do actual film. Oh, what are your thoughts? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, that's a scary one right there. And I hope that's not the case. But, wow. Now, our players, we got a lot of youth. on. We got a mix of youth um, and a lot of old guys. Older guys, defensive line. Derek Wolf, well, he's not there this year. Um, but Brandon Williams, Calais Campbell, Justin Houston, Pernell McPhee, a lot of older guys there. Um, the youth is on the back end. Got Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters, uh, Deshaun Elliott, Chuck Clark, um, Patrick Queen, Malik Harrison, Tyus Bowser, Matt Abike, even though he's up front, um, Anthony Averett. Uh, so a, a lot of youth on the back end, more more the, the veteran leadership is up front. Um, so usually as you get older, you do things better. Um, so if film study is an issue now, uh, it's, it's very important that that gets corrected like ASAP. And, and that's one of the things that it really takes a lot of maturity to fix because film study is your own personal study habits. Nobody can do that for you. They can show you how to do it but they can't do it for you. Next question came from my boy David. He said, hey, Engraven, hope the family's doing well. Team, keep it clean. Be safe out there, loved ones. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet because I could write a book on all the things that are going wrong since before the season started. Uh, I'm a fantasy football guy, so I have experience with pulling the plug before I'm stuck, trying to manage with the downslope players sometimes, the downslopes players sometimes go through during the season. I can't help but think that EDC pulled the plug on Mark, big trust Ingram too soon. Uh, he, along with Lamar, changed the culture of the organization in seconds. He was a good runner and was extremely optimistic. I feel like they gave up too soon. What are your thoughts? God bless and team keep it clean. No, I, I wouldn't say they gave up too soon. Um, I would just say when it, it just it wasn't looking good. And they were paying him, what, five mil per? Um, they ended up giving that to Gus, uh, who was certainly worth a lot more than that. Um, but they end up giving that to Gus and with Mark Ingram, they weren't even using him toward the end of the season. So if you're not using somebody, but they're paying, they're getting paid a, a decent amount of money, not nothing crazy, but you could cut back on that. Why not? Why not? And then you don't have to share the wealth anymore like they were doing early on last season. Why not? So no, I don't think they pulled the plug too soon. It's just, I, I think, may, I can't say why you think that, but I think one scenario that may impact your thinking with that is the fact that we don't have J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards. I think if we had those guys, I don't think any Ravens fans would be talking about Mark Ingram. This question came from my boy Mike Reed. He said, team, keep it clean. Mike Reed here can air read. Anyway, in your voice. Good Sunday for the Ravens after the horrendous loss on Thursday. I know people gave uh, gave a saying, or people gave in to saying that we need to get rid of Harbaugh and Roman. I'm not really for it, but I wouldn't be opposed to it either. Sometimes change is good and might be what we need. Case in point with T. Martin and Keith Williams. Those two came in and we see huge steps in our wide receivers this year. Only thing consistent about Greg Roman is his running attack and lack of adjustments in crutch time. Uh, Wink has his spurts also. His schemes have players playing out of position at times. His schemes seem a little too complex at times. Players have to think more instead of just reacting to the ball. Look at these two big plays against Miami. The long Justin Jefferson touchdown, more so on Chuck Clark, LOL. But you get my point. Look at PQ. He's looked so much better at will than the mic. Young coaches might be better. We have the talent, just uh, it, it just wouldn't really be, it wouldn't have to be rebuild mode, especially not with number eight at QB. What are your thoughts? Uh, and he said, hope all is well with you and the fam. Keep up the good work. And like the Ravens were Thursday, I'm out. Mm, they certainly were uh, pretty much the entire time. Um, oof, that would be something um, to get a, a, a younger coach. Um, and it, it, get, having a younger coach could do a, a couple of different things. It, it could uh, show that he, I mean, he would have a, a pretty good roster especially with what's that quarterback, um, but he could possibly go through growing pains. Uh, and he would have his growing pains. Um, he could be this young, innovative, offensive mind. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's get it. Uh, and then he could, again, on the other hand, he could have his growing pains. Um, and that would be what you take. And, and it would be him getting his experience as a coach, whoever that may be. So if, if that did end up happening... Okay, I'd be cool with it. Again, if they got a younger guy like, and again, that that they might, and John Harbaugh has a good connection to the players. 
Uh, but a younger guy, he could have a, a different kind of connection to the players. And not that you got to be all buddy-buddy with the players and whatnot, because there needs to be a limit. Because you still got to make sure that they respect you um, and, and that they not in no like, oh, man, I'm better than you. Not that kind of respect. But there, there has to be a, a level of respect there uh, between player and coaches. Um, and, and between when you give them instruction and whatnot, they need to know that, hey, you ain't messing around. And so that's that's really important in my eyes. So it could work. And that's one of those things we just we wouldn't know until uh, they tried. But I, I don't. Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. Next question came from BB. He said, what's up, fam? I'm going to just jump straight into this. What is your opinion on Ronnie Stanley? Do you think the Ravens are going to move on from him? No, I don't think they will. Uh, he said he's been injured. Same injury. Too much. I'll, yeah, I, I don't think the Ravens are going to move on from him. But I, like I said before, I do think the Ravens need to go into next season as if he's not playing. And I, sh I feel like they should uh, go into next season just not even expecting him to play. I mean, yeah, he's, he's going to get healthy enough s soon enough. But I feel like they should go into next season and not count on him returning. Even though he will, but just look at him as a bonus and just and, and get somebody else for left tackle just in case. Because you can't rely on Ronnie Stanley at this point. Uh, and his other question was, is Brandon Williams on his way out too? I, I do believe so. Big cap hit. Uh, he's a player that they take off the field on those third and longs, those pass rush downs. Uh, passing downs, I mean. So, yeah, I think he's gone. Uh, and he said, this Ravens team needs to focus on protecting Lamar and his contract. Got to stop being so invested into injury-prone athletes. Thanks for the channel. Hashtag team keep it clean and hashtag positive. Appreciate that. I mean, when... When you invest into somebody, um, you you don't invest in them thinking, oh, man, this person, they're going to get hurt all the time. Well, with Tavon Young, he had been getting hurt before he got his deal, uh, and they still invested in him, though. Um, but then he's kept getting hurt. Uh, so hopefully this year will be the year where he finishes it out completely. Um, and I know he came off the game. He came out of the Miami Dolphins game, but thank goodness it wasn't anything serious. And he's he's been practicing this week, so oof, that, was, cause that was scary. Um... But yeah, it's just it's, it's one of those things that just ends up being unfortunate circumstances where guys get hurt. Uh, Brandon Williams, I would not say Brandon Williams is injury prone. Ronnie Stanley, yes, Brandon Williams, no, I wouldn't say Brandon Williams is injury prone. Um, but because he's missed he's missed one game this year with a shoulder injury and another game being on the uh, the COVID list, and he was a, a close contact. So. But, yeah, I think that uh, he's coming off the books this year. Him, yes, Ronnie Stanley, don't know. Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? I'm starting to think that Jimmy Smith is in some type of doghouse or something behind the scenes is going on. I know we both agreed that he should be playing more, but it seems like lately they're not playing him at all. The thing that struck me was in this past Monday's press, a reporter asked Harbaugh why Smith only played one snap in the Vikings game. Harbaugh said that wasn't part of the plan and we want him playing more. Then Harbaugh said, y'all should ask Wink about that when he's up there at the presser. What in the world is that all about? Shake, shaking my head. I know you was at the Miami game Thursday, and I didn't see 22 on the field at all in the game watching from my TV screen. Just curious to know your thoughts on the situation. Yeah, with Jimmy Smith, I don't know what's going on with him. I, I don't know why he hasn't been being played. Um, I, I'm not sure. Like, even at the Dolphins game, when Tavon Young went out, they put Chris Westry in instead of Jimmy Smith. So I, I'm not sure what's happening. Um, could it be a doghouse type of thing? That would make it make sense, but I, so I, I don't know, though. I don't know because he's obviously healthy. He's been out there. He's been suited for, like, every game, well, most games, but the only time he's been inactive is when he wasn't healthy yet. So I, I'm not sure what the status is with Jimmy Smith. And the last question on this extended episode of NFL questions from subscribers, I am tired. I am hungry. I'm thirsty. I am ready to eat, but I know that ain't got nothing to do with y'all, but anyway. Um, came from my guy YSS Dre to Don. He said, "Hey, Graven, hope everything is well with you and the fam." The Dolphins exposed us last week, and Giro has only made it that much clearer in the most recent presser when he said that the Cover Zero scheme is nothing new. He's not wrong. My thing is the Dolphins brought speed and aggression to our frail offensive line and running back department. With the offensive line's terrible play all season, it paved way for Miami to bring speed blitz packages and a plethora of other defense. The defense is out of the same 2-4-5 package. We had no answers because the line couldn't provide any protection for Lamar. It was hard to watch, so I don't know the whole game. But from what I remember, that was one of the main reasons why, aside from the pure lack of any adjustments, until garbage time. 
so yeah it was a uh, it was a frustrating watch it, it was a tough watch it was um pretty ugly game overall uh it was something that you uh like like Giro said Giro said it best he said uh that was a straight to DVD type of film and it was like we don't not, even we don't even want to watch that on DVD we don't even want to see that on demand but yeah it was very very ugly and the game was just it reeked of grossness and that's not even a word so um now it's all about what Ravens do moving forward. It's all about how how they like how, how they proceed. Um, so I, that's why I think I think so much heat is on Greg Roman. There's so much pressure right now on Greg Roman because Thursday you were in the spotlight. Everybody saw what the Ravens' offense did and did not do. Um, so now if you follow this, like, and, and now Khalil Mack, he's, he's been put on injury reserve. He's having season ending, uh, ankle surgery, I think, or foot surgery, one of those two. So he's out this game. Uh, they're going to be missing a few other guys as well. And a few significant guys. I know Allen Robinson is doubtful, but again, that's, that's the offense. But on defense, they might be missing Eddie Jackson. We'll see. But Bears going to be missing some significant guys. So if your offense, I don't expect them to come out flat. I don't expect them to be flat. I expect them to put up a lot of points. But in the case that they don't, Greg Roman will be under a lot of fire. And I think possibly could be relieved of his, his duties. If they like came out and stayed flat against the Bears and did not and put out a bad performance on offense, I really do believe that he would be out of there like the next day or that same day. I do. Um, but let's hope that he doesn't get fired and let's hope that things turn around and the offense just plays great. <laughs>